Developments in Shanghai have set all China aflame. Terror-stricken refugees fleeing from the bombing of the Japanese planes have aroused their people with tales of the outrages. Chinese soldiers, retiring from part of the native city after fierce fighting, threatened to invade the foreign settlement as soon as they received reinforcements. In the international settlement, American Blue Jackets are now on guard as part of the force stationed there to protect white residents during the present turmoil in China. Here's the American consulate, which was endangered by recent fighting in the Shapai district. U.S. Marines like these were fired on in this park by snipers. Secretary General Fessenden of the Municipal Council forbade boycott posters but failed to stop the trouble. In the Wangpu River, Man of War Row lies off the Bund. Ships of all nations ready to protect their nationals. This Japanese destroyer is typical of the Mikado's force at Shanghai, which landed Marines to storm the Shaphai district. The Japanese got a foothold there after strong resistance and are now erecting barricades in an attempt to hold their gains against returning Chinese troops. The international settlement itself is now thronged with Chinese refugees. Special patrols at the borders search everyone entering to make sure no snipers are smuggling arms into the foreign section. Shanghai is the commercial outlet for the Yangtze River Valley, where teeming millions live and toil to enrich the merchants of the coast. Nanking, which is on the river, has already been bombarded by Japanese vessels coming up from Shanghai. Crack troops of the Shanghai Shek are guarding the town. U.S. river gunboats like this one on the Yangtze are not strong enough to cope with conditions, so destroyer divisions of the U.S. Asiatic fleet are now in Chinese waters to reinforce them, accompanied by the flagship Houston, a 10,000-ton cruiser, which will lead the Armada in the Orient. Meanwhile, the Mikado's Navy has concentrated a strong fleet of ships at Shanghai and is sending some up the Yangtze on punitive expeditions to other Chinese towns. The United States fleet is now steaming to Hawaii, where it will engage in war maneuvers. Within hailing distance of the disturbed Orient, real guardians of peace on the warlike Pacific. Reinforcements are being rushed to the scene of action as the disagreement between Japan and China rages furiously. In Shanghai, refugees pick their way through the tangled mass of barbed wire in an effort to escape the siege of battle. Deserted entrenchments mark the path of skirmish. Bullet-riddled buildings tell a tale of disaster. The dead and wounded lie about the streets while the flaming inferno swallows all within its reach, destroying the humble dwellings. Thousands of refugees flee the stricken area on flat cars with their meager belongings. Children are terrified. The older folks surround the incoming passenger cars, begging a morsel of food. Holding their baskets out and buying for help, they present a tragic picture. The relief societies are extending every effort to feed and clothe the youngsters. After all, it isn't their fault. And are the rice kitchens popular? These poor kiddies probably haven't eaten anything in days. Meanwhile, the great armies move forward. Town after town is destroyed. Heavy fire reduces the once flourishing farmlands to waste. The Japanese launch an attack. The Chinese retreat from their hastily constructed defenses. The trains rush the injured to safety under the protection of machine gun fire. Great guns roar across the countryside, hurling their deadly missiles. It's the story of a war that technically is not a war. The excitement in Shanghai continues unabated as the Japanese surround the Shapai district with a ring of steel. The Mikado's Marines, shown here on the very spot of the heaviest fighting, go from house to house searching for snipers. Great Britain has now rushed reinforcements like these from Hong Kong. 
the newly arrived troops are extending the barriers of the international settlement to check surprise attacks and halt Chinese refugees. At every point, machine guns control approaches to the foreign section. Bridges which connect the foreign district with the native city are heavily guarded. All who pass are searched. Across narrow Suchow Creek, which is now the American patrol area, crack Chinese troops are entrenched after Japanese attacks. 30,000 soldiers have been added to the Chinese forces at the walled city of Nanking, where the Lion Hill forts replied to shots from the Mikado's warships. Veteran Chinese artillerymen are bringing up field pieces to strengthen the defenses of the ancient town, which the Chinese seek to hold at all costs. The Japanese warcraft have also shelled the Wusung forts on the Wangpu River, 16 miles below Shanghai. While the great powers strive for peace, Japan's guns are pointed at the heart of China. Manchuria spells trouble at Geneva today, where the League of Nations is working for peace. Japan, which claims that her citizens are being killed by rioting Chinese, threatens to withdraw her delegation from the League, should it interfere in the fight with China. All Japan's military might stands ready to hurl itself into the fray, if the Emperor Hirohito, shown here at the army maneuvers, gives the word. Since the Russo-Japanese War in 1904, when Japan wrested control of Manchurian cities from the Tsar, the Mikado's men-at-arms have guarded the rich province, incurring the dislike of the native Chinese and Manchus, who fear annexation. Today, Japan's extension of her military control has aroused China. These troops, being rushed from Japan to reinforce the army in Manchuria, are equipped for hard campaigning, but Japan insists they are merely strengthening the Manchurian railway guard threatened by Chinese disorders. In China, the forces of President Chiang Kai-shek, of the Nanking General, are gathering to resist the Japanese. The warlords of China, who for years have fought each other, are rallying against the alien invader. Miserable refugees are fleeing from the war zone, where both sides are mobilizing for action. And while the delegates of these great Asiatic powers insist they want peace, Rival forces blaze away at each other in the conflict which will decide the fate of Manchuria, a real prize of war.